Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Charlotte 49ers Dynasty. This team has, man, I, I just overachieved. I mean, there's no other way to put it. We went into the ACC in our first year and have went 9-0 overall, 6-0 in conference, beating the best teams in our division in Notre Dame and Clemson already. So we have three games left on the schedule, NC State, Florida State, and Maryland. All teams who are teetering around 500, North Carolina State is 3-6. and six. They definitely underachieved. They came into the season preseason ranked. On top of the Heisman list is D.C. Raymond. Remember, we tried to go after D.C., and we kept track of him. He ended up going to South Carolina after season one's recruiting class. And we are now slated to possibly have a shot at the ACC title with a win today. I think we will guarantee a clinch with one more win. Now, looking at the awards, how about Ralph Clark having himself an excellent year? He's ahead in two categories as far as awards go he is first and one of the best linebackers in the country how about daniel pierre in his first year also he's second on the lombardi list and then we also have matthew meager our punter and then uh brooklyn santana as a returner as well so looking at the season stats terrence pitt howard is closing in on 1000 yards on the season nine touchdowns as well so he could have a Next game, he could clinch that 10 touchdown, 1,000 yard mark, 6.6 .6 yards per carry. He is ridiculous, 66 yards away from 1,000. Devon Cash got 10 touchdown catches last year. It hasn't seemed like he scored a whole lot, but every game he's getting into the end zone. He doesn't even have 700 yards yet either. He leads our team in catches and yards and touchdowns. What a year for uh, Devon Cash. And then defensively, man, is our defensive front doing well. Ralph Clark, Daniel Pierre, uh, Daniel Yates, all those guys, Jamar Parker as well. And then on the back end, Terrence Youngblood's ha actually having a quietly good year as his first year starting. And I think if there is a weakness, though, it is our defensive backs. I don't think we're producing the turnovers that we would in years past. I think Kevin Knox has definitely taken a small step back. He was very good the last couple of years. This year, he's been shaky without uh, Vincent Youngblood on the other side of him. So looking at NC State, they are 3-6 and six on the season. They have a running game, Cunningham. Their quarterback has only thrown five touchdowns the entire season through nine games. Five touchdown passes, four interceptions. That is incredible. Their defense has definitely been keeping them in games. If that folds, then they're in trouble. So let's get into this game. NC State, uh, one of our rivals here in North Carolina, as that one is booted out of the back of the end zone. And here comes Devon Cash. Two touchdowns last episode and last game and I just want to highlight that I did have Devin Parker as the emergency quarterback I forgot that I did have Brendan Hagerty as a quarterback as well he is going to be a guy that is going to get in because he's got some speed with Cameron Gilliam being out for the year we don't have that true backup but Brendan Hagerty is also a freshman who finally gets his shot so here's the first pass of the game and it's picked off by Carter we were looking for Devon Cash right away and it's picked off jeffrey johnson may not have seen the defender right there across the middle he just threw it right to him he didn't even have to move well north carolina starts out with a turnover already let's see what they do here's the quarterback throwing across the middle he's got jackson jackson breaks a tackle he's still on his feet that's kevin knox who misses him again it's a touchdown dylan jackson gets in ben finley throws his sixth touchdown pass of the year on that play. Kevin Knox can't make the tackle. Then Devin Parker tries to come in. He can't make it. It's seven nothing. Wow, what a start to this game. Disastrous. Here's the throw out to the right side and that is caught. Matt Brooks on the seven yard catch. It's a first down. So now at about the 45, here's a handoff. It's Terrence Pitt Howard. It's a gain of three. Now, Terrence Pithauer, remember, is 66 yards away from 1,000 yards. He has been our bell cow this year. Definitely something I saw in him last year as well. Here on third down, there, there's the pre pressure getting to Jeffrey Johnson, and that will end up being a punt. So NC State comes back out onto the field now with possession and the lead. Here's a handoff. Cunningham stops in the backfield. Ralph Clark, loss of three yards. 
He's going to be an uh, All-American and award winner, all of that. So third and 15, here is Finley now. Under pressure, he gets to him. Safety, Daniel Yates. He leads our team in sacks this year. He gets after one right there, and there is the first points of the game for Charlotte, and Ben Finley goes down. So here we take back over after the punt this time. Jeffrey Johnson, let's see if he can put together a nice drive this time. Here's a handoff. Terrence Ben Howard, he's got blocking. Nice cut up field. He makes one man miss. He gets pushed out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Gain of 24 yards for Terrence Pitt Howard. So now inside the red zone. Here's a handoff. This time it's Terrence Pitt Howard inside the 15 for a gain of eight. We eventually do pick up that first down. Now move inside the five for a first and goal as this first quarter does wind down. We get the snap off just in time. Here's a handoff to Terrence Pitt Howard. It's a touchdown. We take the two point lead here to end the first quarter. Charlotte bounces back after that first possession turnover. So here's a handoff to start the second quarter. Here's Cunningham, great blocking downfield. Down the sideline and gets run down from behind by Clifton Cobbin but it's a big time run by North Carolina State, and that is a first down. So here's the option this time. Jackson has it with space. He's already got a touchdown in this game, and he runs this one to the left side for a gain of 21. And they're pulling all the tricks out of the bag this game. That was a great play call. Now they're inside the 10. Here is Ben Finley from the shotgun. He's gonna throw to left side, and it's a catch by Dylan Jackson. His second of the game, touchdown, six yards out. Three passes attempted, two touchdowns for Ben P Finley. So here we go back on an offense. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is Terrence Spit Howard out of the backfield. He picks up a gain of 15 as the second quarter comes to about five minutes left. And here's Terrence Spit Howard. He's going to get the handoff to the right side. He breaks a tackle. He's off to the races, and he's got space inside the 10. Pushed out of bounds at the 7. Great run by Terrence Pitt Howard. He's at 84 yards. He's over 1,000 yards with that run. Congratulations to him. He's also closing on the all-time score, scoring record for running backs in Charlotte history. Here's a throw, and that's caught. Devon Cash breaks his record. It's a touchdown. You got to love it. 11 touchdowns on the year. He was actually already the holder at 10. He gets another one. Now that makes it 11. 16 to 14 now. Here's a handoff by Cunningham. Here is a nice hole up the middle. Nice stiff arm. He gets tackled from behind by Xavier Hayes, but it's a first down run. And Ben Finley has been moving the ball with this offense pretty well. Here's a handoff. This is Cunningham again. He's got space, and he picks up a gain of 16. And this team has been moving the ball quite well in this one. So here they are inside the red zone. Here's a counter play, this time to Rodgers. Rodgers gets to the outside, picks up a gain of 11, and another first down on this drive. So now at the one, this is now a third and goal. We send the all-out pressure. We get to Finley, but he throws it just in time. The third passing touchdown to Dylan Jackson. Can you believe it? Three touchdown catches in one half. He's only attempted four passes. Can you believe that? So here is Jeffrey Johnson this time, scrambling to the left side. He's going to take it himself, and he does cough it up, and NC State falls on it before halftime. We try to get some points on the board, and that time it did not work as Jeffrey Johnson can't hold on. So NC State gets one more chance at the end zone here before halftime. Here's a deep throw, and this one is picked off Clifton Coppin at the two, and that one will do it going into halftime. So 21 to 16 now as here is NC State with a five point lead to start the half. Here is an option. This time Jamar Parker on the edge seals it up. It's a great tackle for loss. That's a loss of four yards. It was him, the running back and the quarterback on that tackle, third and five. This is Finley trying to get rid of it. Daniel Yates gets in there and hits the quarterback and that one falls incomplete so now we get our first punt of the second half here is Haggerty into the game looks like he's gonna just run the ball and this could have been a design run he just takes to the right side it's a gain of 15 it's a first down he brought in Brandon Haggerty to get some yards there 
But that was supposed to be just a quarterback draw up the middle, but everybody was uh, clogging up the middle that time. So here is Terrence Pitt Howard still chugging along. 110 yards, eight and a half per carry. So here is Johnson now throwing to left side. His favorite target this year is Devon Cash. He gets pushed inside the five, and now it's goal to go. We get it all the way down to a fourth and goal, and TPH gets in. It's a touchdown, and there is the record. 42 touchdowns for Terrence Pitt Howard. You got to love it. Congratulations to him. So we have two record holders on this roster right now, Devon Cash and Terrence Pitt Howard. Here's a quick throw to the right side, and that is Brooks out of the backfield. He picks up about a gain of 10. The clock winds down inside of three and a half minutes now. Ben Finley on the other side of the 50. In the pocket, throws, and he's got Jackson again. He's just throwing the ball to Jackson. Jackson gets the ball on options, gets the ball through the air. Three touchdown catches in his sixth catch of the game. So here is Finley this time in the pocket. Jackson again. Open on the outside. It's a gain of 13. Can you believe it? So now inside the 20, here is Rodgers. Handoff. He's got space and makes a couple of men miss. It's a touchdown. His second of the, almost second of the day. He almost broke that one earlier. And it gets he gets into the end zone this time. And now it is 28 to 24. Jeffrey Johnson, his first pass on the next drive is caught. Brooklyn Santana. You know, Brooklyn's had issues with catching the ball in this series, and maybe he will take the Devon Cash route. Remember, Devon Cash couldn't catch the ball to save his life in season one. So here is Jeffrey Johnson this time scrambling to the right side and picks up a gain of 13, this time taking it himself. So now second and 12 throw across the middle is Christopher Dalton, it's a touchdown. Falling in is the big tight end, the senior guy, and he gets it in. How about Christopher Dalton, man? He's just been great so far in this series. He's been athletic, hasn't put up the big time numbers, but he's been productive. So now Daddy. first and 10 on the next drive. Here is Ben Finley going down. It's Daniel Yates again, his second sack of the game. So that brings it back to a third and 11. They run the draw play this time to Cunningham. That's not going to work. Gain of two as they hustle it up to the line here. Fourth and nine. They only have one timeout left. I'm surprised they ran that play. Finley in the pocket, dumps it off. Cunningham's got it. He breaks the tackle and tries to reach for the first down. He's not going to get it. Eight-yard gain, but he needed nine. He needed to get to that 35, and he just couldn't reach the ball out. The defense was swarming. C.J. Miles gets the tackle, and that one will do it. How about this Charlotte team? Ten wins this season. Usually we have to wait till the last game of the season to see if we get ten wins in the bowl game. This time it's in the regular season. We still have two more games remaining. North Carolina State put up an excellent, excellent fight, but they could not get it done. I got to give it up to this Charlotte team, man. We just have grit. That's the thing. We win games with grit. Our defense definitely comes up with stops when we need them. And that's been what I've wanted so far in this series. Coming from season one where we gave up so many points in season two, we also did the same thing. I wanted season four to really be that year where we kind of just come together as a defense and shut people down up front. And that's what we've been doing this year. Daniel Yates, Daniel Pierre, and Jamar Parker are definitely just changing this defense. You can see it every single game. And last year, it was the secondary that was saving us. This year, it's the front, and we get the victory here close by three. So here we go. Two games remaining, and in the ACC Coastal, Pittsburgh is in first place. 21 touchdowns, one interception for their quarterback, and they have two games remaining, but that last game versus Miami – that's going to be the decider here to see who goes to the championship. They got to win versus UVA, but I'm not worried about that game. Miami is the wild card here. So we do end up playing Florida State next game, and we end up winning 38-31. to Another close game for this Charlotte team. We move on to 11-0, 8-0 in conference, and Jeffrey Johnson throws four touchdown passes in this game. Terrence Howard once again runs over 100 yards, 6.8 yards per carry. Man, is he good. And then Johnson runs in for a touchdown. He had five total touchdowns 
in this game. He was amazing. JPE had two touchdowns. He haven't heard his while in heard his name in a while. And Devon Cash adds yet another touchdown to his total. So we hop into the last game of the season. Let's look at some quick highlights of this Maryland game as we go up against a Maryland team who was supposed to hover around, I'd say, a couple of games over 500. I think they were preseason ranked. I think that was definitely a higher ranking than it should have been. And we take the lead 7-0 in the first quarter. But we find out some interesting news. Miami upsets Pittsburgh, and that will propel them to go to the conference championship. I'm very disappointed in Pittsburgh. We needed two teams from the ACC to, to rep us in the uh, you know playoffs going forward. And I think that that just blows Pittsburgh's shot right there because they were going to play in the ACC championship. I think win or lose, they would have been in the playoffs, but instead, they're out. So we go back to the game now. Here's Cape Kaiser taking the 14-point lead as Maryland is just trying to keep up with this offense. Here's Kaiser again from about the 30, 35, or no, it's a 27. Here's a handoff, and he gets in. This time, it's Cape Kaiser for a big gain touchdown. That is actually from the 29. I am just like blind today. 29-yard touchdown run for Kaiser. And now we move this game on to the fourth quarter. Here's another handoff. This time, Labata, the same play we just scored on with Kaiser. Two quarters later, it's a touchdown. 18 yards. Charlotte is putting it on Maryland, but Maryland has the fight, and they just keep scoring in garbage time here. And here up by seven. Here's Kaiser to end the game with a first down, and he just does that. 35 to 28 ends up being the final score as we kneel it out with Jeffrey Johnson. Great win here. Terrence Pitt-Howard actually got shaken up in this game. He should be good for the conference championship. We'll have to keep an eye on him. He's been actually often hurt this season. It's been quietly noted, but every single game, he kind of goes out for a couple of plays. He's just had lingering issues uh, throughout his career. He's been hurt a couple of times. Same thing as kind of JPE. JPE's just kind of had lingering issues. Then he had that shoulder injury last year, and he kind of had to switch positions. Same kind of deal. But we get the win here in the last game of the season, 28 to 35. A little too close for comfort, but we gave up a couple of garbage time touchdowns, and Maryland ended up making it really, really close in this one. Daniel Yates did have another sack, add that to his total. Hopefully he gets some national respect because he's been having an excellent freshman year and we end up getting the win. So 12 and 0 here as we look at the rest of the top 10 and I want to see who's close to making the college football playoffs. Now it's interesting Auburn and Tennessee go up against each other. I think that since they're three and four, they're going to make the playoffs. You know, I do have the ability to actually edit now with, uh, you know, the whole college football revamp project. They added some utility tools that we can use to edit the playoffs. We can edit bowl games. We can do all that stuff. But I want to make sure the committee gets this right. And I want to see who's going to get in. I think South Carolina is a candidate. They have a very good team, nine and three. Their two losses are Georgia. That was a bad loss to a five and seven Georgia team by five. But then they lost to Tennessee by seven. That was only their second loss. And they are number four in the country. Then they lost to a ranked Clemson team. So this, to me, is a playoff team, and D.C. Raymond is the quarterback of that team. Even though they're not in the conference championship, I think they might be in over other teams. I think that's one of the three loss teams that probably could snag that eight spot just because they are, you know, a three loss team. But they could be seven as well. How about Rice? They rebound as well. They are actually number seven in the country. And here are the conference championships, though. Marshall and Georgia Tech will face off. They will actually get promoted to the ACC next year. And then looking at the other conferences, how about uh, FIU in Ohio? They will get promoted to the American Athletic Conference. Rice does not get that promotion because they did lose a conference game to Ohio. And they ended up bouncing back and winning some other games. So that will do it here for this episode. Next episode, we will highlight the ACC championship versus Miami. And Lee Corso is going with the upset. Wow, incredible. I think win or lose, we're still in the playoffs, though. I mean, just to think about it, you know, it's a ranked team versus a ranked team. We're number one in the country. No way we drop all the way down to number nine. It's not like we're going to, you know, play a bad team. 
but still we want to come home with the acc championship hopefully go undefeated in this series so hit subscribe hit that like button stay tuned let's get it let's go